Hey everybody, today we're gonna be talking about how to debug and create a process builder in Salesforce. One of the biggest pains with process builder is that you don't have a great way of debugging it. And what I mean by that is you don't have a great way of knowing, did your process run? Did it run correctly? What steps in the process completed? Things like that. So you may create a process builder, it's not working the way you thought it should, but you don't really know what's wrong or where the problem is, or even to be able to tell if it ran. Another big issue with process builders are, is they make these changes automatically, which is great, but then sometimes the end users or management can get confused because changes are happening automatically in the system. And if they have a problem with those changes, they'll come to you and say, hey, I need you to adjust the way this happens. And it's not easy, especially if you have you know, 10 plus process builders in your system, it's not easy to figure out which process builder automatically made the change, what is it that made the change, and how can I make that adjustment? Today, we're gonna talk about how to simplify that um, and make it much easier to track and debug your process builders. So as you can see right now, we are looking at a lead record in a developer org. So this is all a test environment, but we're looking at a lead record. And I don't have any automations built on the lead yet. So we're going to walk through creating a process builder on the lead and then also uh, looking at how to audit and debug that process builder. So let's say, for instance, if a lead source is updated to uh, something like uh, call me now, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll find something on here. So, so let's just make it simple. Um, we'll call it a phone inquiry. And let's say that when a phone inquiry comes in as a lead source, we want to automatically update the, uh, we'll say the status of this lead. Let me find where we have that filled right here. So we're gonna update the status of this lead to working, and we're gonna update the owner of this lead to uh, myself, which I believe in the system here, I'm just under myself as Bradley, right? Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna update the, the owner of this lead to Bradley Rice, and we are going to update the status of this lead to working when a lead source is updated to phone inquiry. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna put some things in place to validate that it's working. All right, so we'll, We'll talk about why we're going to do this in a moment, but the first thing you want to do, and this is to prep yourself to be able to debug, is go to your lead record uh, in the setup menu. And I'll show you how you can do that really quickly if you don't already know. If you're looking at a lead, just click the gear icon and click edit object. And that's automatically going to pop open the, the setup menu for your lead object. So that makes it really simple. And I'm just going to click on the fields here and I'm going to create a new field. And this is just gonna be a simple text field. And I'm gonna call it last process builder ran. And that's it. So that's for my process builders uh, to track when they run. So it's just a text field, that's all it is. And we're gonna work with this a little bit later. This is a test environment. I'm just gonna make it visible to everyone. I'm gonna add it to all the page layouts and I'm gonna click save. So the next thing you wanna do is make sure to click this button up here, set history tracking. Make sure if you don't already have it enabled, click enable lead history, and then find your uh, field that we just created. So last process builder ran, check that box and click save. And I'll show you how all of this is gonna work in just a minute. So uh, now we, we haven't really done anything. All we've done is created a new field called last workflow ran. And that is all we've done up to this point, and we've turned on tracking for it. And if you don't know what that means, we'll talk about that here in just a moment too, and you will get to see it in action. So now I'm gonna come into my process builders and I'll show you, I'm gonna exit out of this and I'm gonna show you a quick way to get to your process builders. From anywhere in Salesforce, all you have to do is click setup. And a lot of people come in uh, to the process builder. They'll come over here in the quick find and they'll type in process builder and they'll click on it here. Much faster way to do that, um, or at least a little bit faster. It's still the same thing. Go into the setup menu and then right over here uh, next to create, 
you're going to see a drop down. Just drop it down and click workflow processes, and you're automatically at your process builders. So that's a much quicker way to dive through that. Um, so we're going to create a new process builder on the lead record. So I just like to create one process per object. So I'm going to call this lead creation, update, and automations. So best practice is to just have one process per object. There are some uh, reasons why you might want to have a couple of different ones or maybe more. But for the most part, in a simple org, you should be able to have one process per object. So we should just have one lead creation update automation process. Now, uh, I would say 99% of the time, uh, the process starts when a record changes. If you need to use these other ones, you will know when you need them. So uh, for the most part, any process you're creating is going to be when a record changes. Now you select your object. So again, we are working on an automation for the lead object. So we're gonna come right here, add an object, type in lead. And uh, we're gonna kick this process off anytime a record is created or edited, not just when it's created. Otherwise, this record over here that I've already created could not fire off this process because we're gonna edit this existing record. So that's it. I just select my record and click save. Now, my criteria was, you know, let me go double check this field name one more time. So this is a lead source equals phone inquiry. So that's all I'm looking for. I am looking for lead source. And it doesn't really matter. This is just uh, the name of this criteria. So name it something that's easy to understand. Um, for this one, oh, I'm going a little too fast. Let me take a step back. So now you're gonna input the, the conditions that you're looking to meet to fire off this process. So for us, that is selecting the lead source field. And we say the lead source equals a pick list value of phone inquiry. So that's what we're looking for. And then you're gonna wanna toggle this little advanced item on right here. Do you want to execute the actions only when these changes are made to the record? And the answer is yes. And what that means is I only wanna fire this process builder when the lead source field goes from something other than phone inquiry and is then set to phone inquiry. The reason you set this is because otherwise, if it's at phone inquiry and then you edit and change somebody's name or change the status and click save, it's gonna refire this process unless you tell it only fire the process when this very specific change is made. So I'm gonna save that. And then we talked about we wanted to, uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna take an immediate action and we're going to, you know, again, sometimes you're gonna create a record, sometimes you might shoot off an email, uh, you might fire off another process, but again, uh, I would say at least 80% of the time you are updating a record when you are running a process. So we are going to update the lead record and we're gonna select the lead record that started our process because that is the record that we made the change to and we want to make additional changes to that record automatically. So all I'm gonna do here is say, uh, we agree that we're gonna update the owner to a specific user, and that user is me, Bradley Rice. We're also, we said we were gonna update the status of the lead. We were gonna update that to working contacted. And that's all we talked about. Now, the last piece we're gonna put in here is this is what makes the debugging and everything possible. We're gonna type in last process builder ran. This is our new field. And what I like to do here is copy the name of my process builder and then put dash the name of my criteria. Um, so if you had multiple steps, you would know exactly which step ran to cause this update to the lead. And I'll show you exactly how this works. I'm gonna save that. And then we're gonna go ahead and activate this process. And this is active immediately. So as soon as you activate it, the process is on. So I'm gonna refresh this record now, coming back to our lead, go to the details of the lead. We can see it is currently owned by the round robin Q1. It is currently an open not contacted status. Um, and what we're gonna do is uh, come right here to the lead source and set it the way we said. So we're gonna set it to phone inquiry. I click save. All right, so immediately everything runs. You can see we are now in a working contacted status. We are now in 
uh, the lead owner is me. And you can see that my last process ran is now lead creation update automations dash lead source equals phone inquiry. Now, the great thing is when we turned on history tracking, that's what this is over here. So you'll notice if you rewind the video, you'll notice there was nothing in the lead history. But now that we made this update, it is tracking that the owner was changed to me. It is tracking that uh, the lead source was changed from blank to phone inquiry. And it is also tracking that at, on 5-28-2020 at 12-25, uh, the field lead status went from open, not contacted to working contacted. So that, that's great. Now, the last thing I'm gonna click view all on this, you'll also see this right here. The last process builder ran, went from blank to our process. So the cool thing is if you had multiple lead processes and another one runs tomorrow, then you would see it again. And I'll, I'll come back to this lead uh, let me head back real quick and we'll take a look at this lead for one more moment. Uh, for the most part, we're, we're done here with what we said we were going to do. We have uh, updated the lead source, automated the update of the owner and the lead status, as well as knowing how to debug whether or not our process ran. We know for a fact our process ran because we see it here and we can view it in the lead history. Now, if you were to come over here and say, all right, I'm going to change this uh, you know, back to something else, or if you said, okay, now we are closed, not converted, um, and we were to swap this over to say blank again, something like that, uh, we would be able to quickly see if we, again, we can iterate over this, meaning we can do it again. So we can update the lead source again. Again, forces that back to work and contacted. We never change this, the process stays the same. However, now we can go in here and the last process builder that ran uh, didn't change because it's still the same process that ran, but we can see all the other changes that happened again. Um, so what this is, allows you to do is as you add lead processes or steps to a process, um, and you can do this on every object, you just need to create that field and set tracking uh, on any object you want, if, whether it's lead, contact, account, opportunity, any object you wanna add these to, you can, and that gives you a great way to track your process builders make sure that they're firing and then see all the changes that are taking place over here in the lead history. Uh, if you're getting value from the videos, make sure to click subscribe and like on the video. Also leave me a comment if you have any questions about, you know, how we did this, other situations we could apply this in uh, or anything similar that you might have some questions about. Uh, feel free to leave a comment and we'll uh, see you next time. Thanks.